Hello, I'm recording this on May 8th, and that means two things. I've given myself permission to have two rants this episode, uh, which means I should remind everyone that my opinions are my own and not necessarily reflective of any sponsors or an affiliated organizations. And it's also time for the Darkness News Update, brought to you by Evluma and the Road Max, a fully featured Fully shielded, fully clear, fully comfortable uh, utility grade Cobra head. If you need that sort of thing or any other dark sky friendly lamp or fixture, take a look at Evluma first, evluma.com or the link in the description if you please. Let's talk about the news. Do people perceive watts or do they perceive photons? This is a question. That forces you to remember your quantum physics. You 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 listen to the Feynman lectures on tape, right? You, you you read Hawking's book. You know that, of course, light exists both as a particle and as a wave simultaneously until observed, and that means that sometimes we measure lighting in wavelengths in in watts, and sometimes we measure it in particles, and that means that sometimes we have to be sure we're measuring things the right way. It might actually be better for photobiology, the sort of stuff we do when we talk about circadian rhythm, (laughs) by measuring photons and not just wavelengths, because that does change how spectral power interacts with us. But even if we're having trouble measuring it on the way in, we can measure it on the way out, because we have a small Slovakian study finding that office workers are benefiting from bright, full-spectrum lighting in the morning. It changes their urinary melatonin levels. There we go. Uh, Speaking of digestion, (laughs) circadian rhythm has been linked with your gut microbiome. Circadian disruption also disrupts uh, the probiotics in your system, and that is bad for your digestion. Uh, We have also found that better sleep is associated with mental health under high-pressure circumstances. This is a study of French nurses reporting poor sleep hygiene and poor mental health that worsened as sleep worsened during the pandemic. We have a new meta-study showing that daylight saving time has mixed safety safety outcomes. We see more motor crashes, but fewer cyclist and pedestrian incidents during the weeks before and after the time change. That's interesting. United States National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is probing Ford's hands-free driving tech over a pair of uh, nighttime collisions, whether or not the actual tech is good at detecting people under nighttime lighting collisions. This isn't a big story, per se, for us, but we've been talking about, um, you know, Noah Sabache has been posting uh, these long-form articles talking about highway lighting. We've had guests on talking about how lighting plays into pedestrian safety. And I just, this is a great opportunity for me to bring that up here because, well, what we we have is actually a a design issue, a multivalent design issue. Uh, Back for the first 50 years of the audio industry, it was the position of automakers that uh, cars, we don't design cars to crash. It's, It's up to authorities to prevent crashes through licensing and regulation of roads. And what happens is that we have this massive third-party investigation into how we design cars for safety. Uh, This becomes a book, Ralph Nader's book in 1965 called Unsafe at Any Speed. And that really wakes up the auto regulators and the audio industry, changes how they assemble dashboards, they make seatbelts mandatory, they change steering columns, and we create crumple zones, and we make cars safer over time. And now we're in a situation where we have a bunch of incentives that are working against us. We have an incentive on fuel economy that forces cars to be bigger, actually. And we have an incentive on lighting that forces them to be brighter, but without being diffuse, without offering the same coverage. And we need another unsafe at any speed moment. We have, we have, you know, an unsafe at any brightness moment right now. And there's this wonderful study out of uh, Columbus, Ohio, that just took all their crash reporting. And it's you put 
what happens is the, the biggest cause of crashes, the biggest correlation of crashes is that just that you have pedestrians and cars in the same place. And it's the position of automakers and it's the position of regulators that pedestrians just shouldn't get hit. It's, it's, it's your job to be safe, not the cars, not the roads. And we need another moment of design that, and also advocacy, but design. We need to rethink speed limits and crossings and all these other things, and even cars, to make people safer. Uh, this show, <laughs> Restoring Darkness, is filed under design uh, in most podcast directories. And that, that's something I decided. Could have been tech, could have been science, could have been anything. But as much as Mike likes to talk about the night, as much as Mark likes to talk about the light, uh, myself and our guests, who are wonderful, and I appreciate all of our guests, like to talk about the anthropogenic and the at. Right? What does it mean? What can we do? Speaking of things that get a lot of comments, conservationists are calling for the end of planned U.S.-Mexico border lighting. Work is resuming on 20 miles of infrastructure on the U.S.-Mexico border. And once again, this is going slowly, but conservationists are calling to not illuminate those 20 miles of border fence, uh, citing damage to nocturnal animals, migratory birds, migratory butterflies, and pointing out that adding lighting is not necessarily going to guarantee any more security in that space. Upper Knitterdale in Yorkshire is expanding their lighting, their lighting regulations with the Mormon lands seeking to limit brightness. Colorado is expanding their dark sky programs with a new initiative from Colorado Tourism. Uh, we have a port, inland port project in Weber County, Utah. Uh, this would at a 9,000 acre development to Salt Lake. And lighting is one of the many pollution concerns being brought up in dispute of that prog program. Shutesbury, Massachusetts will be voting on their lighting bylaws. This specific set of bylaws would target uplight, glare, and trespass. Traverse City, Michigan has um, an elementary school that has been denied outdoor lighting. This has gone to appeal already. Uh, the appeals court is upholding a lighting ordinance, and that school's sports fields will not sports fields will not get lighting. In the UK, uh, a woman living in Barnet, this is a, a suburb of London, has managed to successfully sue the regional council into dimming and warming street lighting. Uh, she's been a photosensitive, a severe photosensitive, since a recent surgery, and. Uh, it's also worth noting that the council tried to get her to sign an NDA to avoid setting a precedent in the UK, so we might see this change sweep in the nation. We're finding a, uh, a University of Western Australia study, a global meta study of data, finds that insect activity, insect activity does increase by 31% at night. It's just the case that insects are more active at night overall across all species, and light pollution is going to change that even more. Moths are getting better at avoiding light traps. Uh, over This is 25 years of data showing that as light increases, UV-based traps are not working against moths anymore, and you need to supplement them with pheromones. We have also discovered that <laughs> zebrafish uh, suffer synapse damage when they are deprived of sleep. In Munster, Germany, uh, a study has found that motion-activated bike lane lighting so this is a bicycle trail that turns on only when it detects motion at a certain speed, a cyclist or a jogger. Uh, that needs to be adjusted to improve bat health. Right now, the timing is just a little too long, and we need to improve that so that bats can forage for food. Cornell's Ornithology Lab has released an animated short advocating for lights out for the birds. Speaking of lights out, that campaign is picking up in Wyoming, Indiana, and Connecticut. These are all regional Audubon societies working to improve exterior lighting during migration season. Uh, speaking of Washington U in St. Louis is going to be dimming their campus lighting during the migration period. And light pollution is being blamed for the deaths of flamingos in Mumbai. Uh, apparently it's lowering them closer to the road and they're getting hit. That's a shame. We're also finding that seabirds are avoiding well-lit areas as they age. We are finding fledglings 
that grow up near cities move away from them as they get older. Uh, the sea turtle lighting regulations of Daytona Beach, Florida will resume from May 1st till October 31st. Clearwater Aquarium in Florida is working with residents on turtle nesting season with the Protect Nest program and education efforts. Android 15 is going to be forcing dark modes and dimmer screens on phones. Uh, this is a new feature on the OS level that will change all the apps as well as override screen settings beyond manufacturer levels. Cyclone Lighting has created a fixture specifically for crosswalks. This is a directional lens that aims to spread in a specific pattern to help people cross the street. And voice actor Roger Craig Smith has raised funds for Dark Sky International at two public appearances, uh, the Huntsville Comic and Pop Culture Expo and Fan Expo Philly. He's <laughs> um, he is using part of his appearance fees and fan donations to advocate for dark skies. He's also a uh, he's also an astrophotographer. I didn't know that. Um, he's between the two events. It's about four hundred fifty dollars, which is more than I've ever raised for Dark Sky International. And I've never played Sonic the Hedgehog. I mean, professionally, I, I, I played it on the Game Gear, but he was the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog. He's also Batman. That's how you know. Is on the side of the night. And lastly, Heineken in the United Kingdom, the UK division of Heineken, uh, which also makes Carlsberg and a number of other Scottish beers, has raised awareness for Dark Skies. This is a award-winning campaign uh, that runs like a PSA, but also offers a giveaway, giving people who buy specially marked six-packs a chance to have a Dark Sky party. Do you know what? Uh, it's really easy to be cynical lately. Uh, we've seen people marketing to this sort of Allen action crowd, and oh, it's easy to be like, ah, oh, it's not good enough. It's not quite there. Dismiss it as, ah, well, sure, it's a low glare sports fixture, but look at it. It's really not. You can always install it wrong. But I have to say that I, for one, am going to ex embrace this cynically. I, for one, welcome the corporate pandering. Because if the corpos are pandering to you, it means you're marketable. And once you're marketable, it, it means it can spread. Again, I've been Scott Walker. The things I say are my, are my beliefs, maybe. Sometimes I'm not sincere. But I do want to say sincerely that thank you to Evluma for sponsoring this. Thank you for Lighthead for syndicating this. Thank, uh, <laughs> thank the Lighting and Darkness Foundation for getting this up and running. And I want to thank you for listening and writing and reviewing and recommending this to people in your life. But until next time, take care of yourself. Mm -hmm.